Hello, and we are continuing on our path to becoming better traders. And we started off with an introduction uh, into trading, uh, more importantly, introduction as to why everybody needs to have a trading plan. And then we got into trading for a living and why I believe that trading is the best way to make a living, especially for those people who want to start off making a resi residual income and transfer it into uh, their primary income. And then we started talking about the financial plan of futures and, and the numbers and how how they work. And um, you know, again, you can go to our website to find out why we believe futures are the best investment vehicle. But overall, we kind of gave you a nice foundation uh, trying to deal with some core market knowledge, try to build up your market knowledge. And now as we're di diving into um, your trading style and your trading system, uh, we want to continue that foundation. So we have a quote here by Ralph Seeger that says, an investor without investment objectives is like a traveler without a destination. And that goes directly back to our first video in this trading plan system where we compare trading plans to travel maps. I'm getting ready to go to a, a reunion with my family and certainly anytime you travel, you wanna have a plan. You know, you wanna know what highway you're gonna use, where you're gonna make your stops for gas and so on. And just like that with trading, you got to know where you're going to get into the trade, where you're going to make your stops as it's moving along, uh, where you're going to have to get some gas in case it goes against you. So we again, as we continue to build your foundation and, and the core market knowledge and dive into our trading system, we want to always emphasize the importance of trading plans. So again, as we continue to build that foundation, we want to talk about four key areas now we're not go quite yet to our triggers and our setups and I know 90 people want to skip right over it I mean my myself I remember when I first started trading options and really uh, started to try to become a better trader and a, a woman came and she's well I'm gonna show you guys how to make a trading plan and I kept saying yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. But how do I make money and she no 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 first you gotta come up with this yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But how do I make money and so you know, I don't want people to overlook, even the experienced traders who are watching this, I don't want you to overlook these four areas that we're going to generally go over before we get to the actual signals and setups and uh, what have you. Because you got to have the foundation. And I, it's so funny to me because I have a newfound appreciation for certain indicators, uh, certain patterns that I've known about for years, and I no longer even use certain patterns that I've known about for years because they were drilled into me when I first got started um, because I didn't have a core market market knowledge but more importantly I was so focused on making money that I didn't focus on the discipline of trading so the four areas that we're going to talk about are chart patterns technical analysis capital management and the psychology of trading with those last two capital management and psychology of trading really being the biggest part of trading because everybody knows chart patterns. Everybody has their favorite indicator. What distinguishes the consistent profitable traders from those who are blowing out their accounts or those who are mostly being drained on a day-to-day -day basis is their ability to control their emotions and manage the trade. So those last two are actually more important than probably chart patterns and technical analysis. I've heard it said that a good trader can uh, make any trade a winning trade if they know how to do position sizing and capital management. I mean, I don't want to be put to that test, but you know, again, I, it just really states the importance of, of capital management. Now, right now, we're going to focus in on chart patterns and go over some of the continuation and reversal patterns that you need to be aware of. And then, as I said, we'll continue on with the other three foundation core components. The way I look at this is think of your dining room table um, and each one of these the chart patterns the technical analysis your ability to manage your capital and your ability to manage your emotions and the psychology of trading are a leg of your trading table and without one of these your table starts to lean and seep out your profits so you know again we're going to build a foundation and get everybody down the path to being a better an effective successful trader so if we're going to talk about chart patterns I do want to just do real quick a quick overview of candlesticks um, 
you know, we're going to hold off the discussion about what type of charts, bar charts, line, candle, how you can achieve candle. We're going to lead that conversation to for a later point. But I do want to go ahead and give a general overview over the history of candlesticks because I think there is a, a an important uh, fact to know. Um, Steve Neeson is probably the modern day person who's given credit for um, doing a statistical analysis of various chart patterns. Um, uh, although he's not the person who brought it to the U.S. That was Charles Dow. But Steve Neeson um, has said that the form of uh, candlesticks as we know it originated uh, by a legendary rice trader named Homa in the town of Saka, and so Sakata. And so, you know, this is how they were trading rice. Um, as I mentioned uh, a moment ago, uh, Charles Dow was the one to bring uh, those candlestick patterns to the U.S. And um, so a variation of what Homa was trading and how he was using candlesticks is what we're seeing right now. So when we think about candlesticks, you know, we can see on a picture here, uh, we've got an open and a close whether it's an up day or a down day, and then we have these wicks for the high of the day and the low of the day. Um, that's basically all you really need to know for right now. Again, we're going, when we get into price action, we'll make it into more of the candles, or I'm sorry, the type of charts that you should use. Uh, but for our chart pattern that we're going to be covering right now, uh, you just need to understand the basic structure of a candle. and you have that right in front of you. Again, we have an open and a close, open on the bottom on a down day, open on top, I'm sorry, on a long day, open on top on a down day, and then we have wicks that it, uh, indicate the highs and the lows of the day. Now, one of the things that many traders will um, sort of deliberate over is what is more important, the what or the why. The what is what you're actually seeing on your chart, your, the price action, the actual candles going up and down. The why may be news, earnings, economic release, uh, you know, some statement from uh, an analyst. That could be the why, but you'll always see the why in the what on the charts. So um, I, I tend to be put more weight on the what and you can find out why at a later date. Um, with candles, you know, they say all information is reflected in the price. You've got buyers and sellers moving the market. Uh, again, that's all entailed in the price action, which we're going to cover later. But what you need to understand um, is that very first fact, which is that we need to be more concerned about why, what patterns are forming and not necessarily why. So let's take a look. Uh, we just gave a basic overview of chart pattern of candles, and now we're going to look at chart patterns. So, what are chart patterns? A chart pattern is a pattern that's formed within a chart where the price is a graph. It's when we're going to combine uh, a series of candles into a pattern. They play a large role in technical analysis. They, they accompany their great partner for our technical indicators. What we have found with technical analysis and chart patterns, it's about uh, behavior patterns. It's about repeatability. It's about probabilities and putting your edge on the side of winning. These patterns repeat themselves over time. So therefore, when you see these patterns, you're, you're, um, you're raising the probability of your edge. Your edge are the chart patterns. Your edge are the technical indicators. And when you combine those together, your edge is uh, is strengthened, and again, your probabilities of your edge working on your behalf is strengthened because of the reputability of these patterns. None of these patterns are 100%, but they all have uh, a greater than 50% uh, likelihood of the pattern repeating itself. And again, chart patterns can either be a continuation of the trend or a reversal of the trend. So let's start off with continuation patterns. There's a couple that we want to look at. First, we've got flags, triangles, and wedges. We're going to start off with the flag pattern. You know, it's pretty easy to see in our visual example here. If you look at the 
vertical straight up and down line, you can see it's identifying the low of a move up and the top of the move up. There is our pole. And as we consolidate and pull back a little bit as um, probably some profit taking, um, uh, some indecision about whether or not this is still a good price to buy, this is the flag being formed here by the channel of the consolidating down. And as we break higher above the channel, that is our continuation of the pole. So the flag pattern, both upside down and uh, regular, uh, are continuation patterns because again, we have a move up forming the pole as we consolidate and break above the consolidation, that is continuation of uptrend, or upside down, move down, and as we consolidate higher and push below that consolidation, that is a continuation pattern to the downside. They are reliable, short-term uh, continuation patterns requiring a minimum of three to five bars. Uh, you know, when you start seeing numbers about a minimum, you know, really it's uh, patterns, technical analysis, trading, a lot of it is art more than it is science. I'm um, sure there are probabilities and numbers and statistics behind most of this, but if you visually see something with only two bars, you know, or four bars or whatever, um, you can still trade that, you know, it's just whether or not you can see it. In uh, a room today, you know, we were talking about the W pattern and some people saw it and some people didn't. And then, of course, all of these patterns change will look differently on different time frames. As we already talked about, on a flag pattern, after the consolidation, after the initial move up, the price will resume in the direction of the original trend. And in this situation, the consolidation pattern, we use trend lines to identify the top and the bottom of that consolidation pattern after the push up. So a bullish flag is what we see right here, and that is the uh, move up, we consolidate, and we push back higher. And a bearish flag will be the opposite. Um, in this situation coming down, and I know this is going backwards, but you can get the idea. We're going to actually pull up a couple charts here, just so you can see. And uh, remember, at the towards the end, when we we're going to pull up live charts to identify these, but as we're going through our foundation, we're going to just go ahead and use uh, basic uh, pictures. So here we can see uh, a bull flag pattern. Um, we have a move up. Now notice. As I was saying before, uh, charting, chart patterns, uh, there is a little art to it. There's not a pretty straight move up. We have a drift up. So there's your pull. So, uh, you know, notice that we have a one, uh, some people may even use just this one pole, this one line uh, gra graph. Uh, but notice we have a drift higher. And as we consolidate lower, we draw the trend lines to identify the high and the low of the consolidation and then when we break above that we have a continuation of the pattern that we even have it again a move higher consolidation and we move higher two examples of bull flags next we're going to talk about triangles as you can see in the picture the triangles is when we have a move up and we retrace back and we move back up to that same level. So we're forming, there's our angle and there's the top of the triangle, there's our resistance, and yet we're also forming higher lows as support. Here's a higher low, next higher low, next higher low. So we continue to have higher lows, yet we're unable to break this resistance level and then finally we break above. This is a continuation pattern. What we have here is that indecision on whether or not we have a good price for the, the stock. We make a move higher. The sellers have now taken over control and push it lower. And now the buyers are taking control and saying, no, 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 this is a good price. Let's move it up. But once again, we have indecision and then the sellers take control and so forth until we break above that resistance level. Breakouts from this pattern are considered very reliable and tend to happen as we get closer and closer to the angle, the corner of the triangle. There are three basic types of triangles. Again, art versus science. How you draw your trend lines, how you draw your lines of support and resistance 
tends can be art versus actual specific science. Let's look at the ascending, descending, and symmetrical triangle. So here we have a symmetrical triangle, and what's the key about the symmetrical triangle is it's different than what we saw. And what we saw before, we have a, a clear horizontal line as the resistance. And in a descending triangle, we have a clear horizontal line as a support. But here, in the symmetrical triangle, you can see we have a higher low, but we have a lower high. Higher low, but a lower high. So we're waiting for the stock to break out of the triangle. High, lower high, I'm sorry, higher low, lower high, lower high, <laughs> higher low, lower high, and then when we break the lower high, we break down to the downside. Now we go to the sitting triangle and you can see that clear horizontal line acting as our resistance as we continue to make higher lows and then we break higher. And then with the descending triangle, our clear horizontal lines now support and as we're making lower highs we break through the support level so the difference is with the symmetrical triangle you can see we have more of a uh, iso isometric isosceles you tell me what type of triangle is that <laughs> where we have uh, equivalent triangle where we have lower highs and we have higher lows so we're squeezing into a the angle and we break in a continuation of the pattern. What's important about all of this as we continue to move on and talk about wedges is that again we will cover these in more details and bring up more charting and as a part of the program you know there's the coaching to help us identify these patterns but what I would do as we uh, share these patterns with you and we say these indicators down the road is you want to spend some time with these and you know find a way for you to get a better uh, pattern recognition um, over time now wedges look very similar to a symmetrical triangle um, the issue is that wedges um, don't get as close to the converging angle as uh, the triangle do um, and uh, wedges um, can both be ascending and descending but again you can see the trend lines we have lower highs and we have higher lows and then we break out there's our ascending wedge and our descending wedge well again what makes this separate from a triangle is that the ascending wedge is actually the angle is actually up here at the top the descending wedge the angle is down at the bottom whereas the the triangle the angle was right you know horizontal right in the middle a lot of people will interchange triangle and wedges all right so now let's take a look at reversal patterns reversal patterns are where we are having a a move and then after uh whether it be the buyers or sellers push it the opposite party takes control and moves the party the, the stock in another direction. Some of our favorites are double tops and double bottoms. Head and shoulder patterns and, and, and um, inverted head and shoulder patterns and failures are our four uh, basic types of reverse patterns that we like to trade. Okay, first we're gonna look at double tops. Here we have a beautiful double top. How, where's our top and again notice that they're not perfectly horizontal this is the art of trading um, they're very close to each other so that's why we're calling both of these tops and then we have the neckline so once we break that neckline that is our entry to this trade and we move lower so we're reversing the uptrend we test a high mm, test a high again mm, and we break lower uh, a, a lot of people also will call this an M pattern because it looks like an M up down up down this is a major reversal pattern that every trader especially professional traders will trade I mean uh, double top double bottoms is something you're just gonna hear over and over again as the name implies that we just talked about we have two tops and a break of the neckline the break of the M is where we have an entry to the trade and that double top is a bullish 
uh, initial trend, and then now the uh, bullishness has lost control, and the sellers come in and reverse it lower. So here we are again looking at the stock, and we're moving higher, and we test, make a peak, come back down, start to form the neckline or the M. We go back and test that same peak. In this instance, we did actually get to the same price. But again, if it would have just made it to here, that would have been fine. Here, fine. The key is, have we failed to make a new high? When we break below the M, when we break below the neckline, that is a breakout to the downside. Now, a double bottom is the exact opposite. We're just going to flip it upside down. And for my M, we now have a W. Once again, we're going to test the downtrend. The sellers have losing control. The buyers come in and say, hey, not yet. The sellers say, I want to retest the lows. I mean, that's one of the most common things you'll hear people say is that a stock always likes to retest its highs and lows. So we retest it. Notice we have wicks here now. They're about the same area. And as we come back higher and break the W, we break the neckline, that is reversing the downtrend and an entry to the upside. So here we are, we're moving lower. We, we make the initial test of the bottom. The buyers come in and establish the neckline. And when we test once again, if we're unable to make a new low, it is a failed new low. And we are moving back higher. If you can see the art of the W, when we break the uh, neckline, the W, that is entry to the upside. The downtrend has now been re reversed, and we are going to go to the upside. Doesn't mean we're going to uh, make new highs, but it does mean that the downtrend is potentially over. Now, I mentioned uh, the head and shoulders patterns, and of course, there's the inverted head and shoulders patterns. And the head and shoulders pattern is almost a, a version of the double tops. Uh, sometimes you'll hear something called a triple top. And you can still see we have a neckline in here that we're concerned about. But what we have is a shoulder. We make a high, come back, make a new high, come back, make another, uh, unable to break the, or test that new high. And when we come back down, we have a neckline and we have a short. This, the head and shoulders, is a reversal of an uptrend. And, you know, so what you'll see what some people say is, is the entry here as we come back down off of the right shoulder and break the neckline, is the entry here or is the entry here? Some people will say the entry is here after we break the neckline and come back and retest it. That's the entry. Some people will say the entry is right as soon as we break the neckline. Let's take a look. Here we have a head and shoulders pattern as we go up. And again, the art of trading, we don't have a perfect uh, parallel uh, pattern here. We make a shoulder, come down and test. Now we make a new high and come back and test. We've got a nice neckline going. When we're unable to take out the previous high, we form the shoulder as we break the neckline. That is an entry to the downside. Inverted head and shoulders, just like the double top and double bottoms, it's just the uh, inverse upside down. We form a shoulder, a new low makes the head, the next shoulder unable to break or push lower belong the, uh, below the head. As we break the neckline, we have a reversal of the downtrend to the upside. Failure is, is, is something that you're going to hear with regards to all of these reversal patterns. Um, some of the f a failure is really, you know, when you're talking about your head and shoulders, when you're talking about your double toss, a failure is, is just that. We're unable, we fail to make a new high, we fail to make a new low. The, uh, what the pattern uh, that the crowd was expecting, we were expecting new highs, we were expecting new lows, and when we're unable to do that, um, that's when panic comes in. And so that pattern failure is a trigger into a trade in the opposite direction. Um, a lot of times what you'll see with this is on strong trend days, this is a contrarian, this could be the uh, uh, counter trend trades that you will find. But the thing about failures is, um, it, the failure is, like, you know, like right here, you know, you could call this a very quick double top. Uh, right here, you can say we failed to test the top here, we failed to make a new low. 
Uh, a failure is almost an abbreviated double top, an abbreviated head and shoulder. It never really gets to feeling out the whole pattern because we failed to even push to go test the top or to push the bottom. So as I was just saying, a failure tends to be the faster version of a lot of our reversal trends. When we look at our chart, I mean, I, I find failures to be a little aggressive. Um, I know people like uh, Dave Elliott, First Wave, trades them religiously and does very well with them. Um, you know, so if we look at the bottom here, uh, we have a push lower. And then on the next candle, we did go lower and then we reversed. So that we failed to make a new low. And again, where you're going to have the discussion is uh, some people say halfway through the initial big bar down, momentum bar down, that's your entry. Some people say as we cross above the momentum bar down, that is your entry. Um, this next bar over, as it pushes down and fails to make the new low. So there's three entries on this failure play. Uh, and again, uh, without really knowing, uh, this, this, the third bar over it could come right back down. So failures can be very aggressive. Um, when I do trade them, I tend to use market if tough is touched. Market if touched exit orders. I'm just trying to get a quick five, seven points versus, as you can see here, we, I mean, on this example, we have a great trend afterwards. Um, and again, you know, you could call this a failure or a double top. Uh, these wicks over here could be uh, double, triple bottoms, wick bottoms. Uh, or again a failure so failures to me are a part of the reversal pattern a part of the double tops and hand and shoulders patterns um, is just that um, you're not waiting for the whole pattern to form you're taking that aggressive entry so we want to review what we've covered so far uh, we've talked about some continuation patterns we talked about flags where we have the a, a move in that direction which is forms the pole and as we consolidate back uh, against the initial move when we break up out of that consolidation that is a continuation pattern triangles are where we have uh, uh, a, a resistance level or a support level or more important we have higher lows and lower highs and we draw our trend lines and when we break out of that that is a continuation pattern wedges are really just triangles except they have a more extreme angle and then on the flip side, we talked about some reversal patterns. We talked about double tops, head and shoulders, and failures. These patterns are bringing an end to the trend, and we're going to move the other side. The reversal of strength has changed from buyers to sellers or sellers to buyers. Overall, we can see that chart patterns are useful gauges of momentum, support and resistance, and an indication of the stock's strength or weakness with regards to the current trend. They help a trader determine a market direction as also we can use them for entries and exits. And any good trader must be able to identify chart patterns. As I talked about earlier, what you have to do is spend time with these outside of this little uh, you know, half hour segment of our webinar here, uh, trading plan video, and uh, learn to be able to recognize it. And this is the art of it. Because again, I was in a room today and some people saw the W, some people don't. Um, so you got to be able to just see, hey, you know what, this is starting to look like a double top. This is starting to look like a head and shoulders pattern. And when you see that, then you can prepare yourself for the next trade. When you're able to manipulate and visualize these patterns, you can then set up for your breakout trades. You can set up for your pullback trades, your count of 10 trades. Um, it'll help you as a future trader. It'll help you for whatever type of traders you are when you recognize these intraday. And here's the most important part. These chart patterns work intraday, daily, monthly, weekly charts across all time frames.